In this tutorial, we will look at texture assets in Xenco Game Studio. To start off, if you want to have a look at a lot of example textures, simply create a new project in the Xenco Launcher, selecting a new game and a blank project. And once you've done that, go to the Asset Packs tab and click on the Materials Pack. This will provide you with a lot of basic textures as well as materials for you to have a look at. For this tutorial, I've already set up a project and I've created an empty folder inside my Solution Explorer. And as you can see, I have one texture imported. So first off, what are textures? Textures are image assets that you use during design time in Xanko Game Studio. In most cases, textures end up being used in materials, which are applied to models. However, textures can also be drawn directly to the screen in case of splash games or other UI elements like sprites. Textures can also be used for skyboxes. And as we've seen in a previous tutorial, textures can be created by either drag and dropping them in from the resources folder or by clicking on the add asset button inside the asset view. I'm now going to drag in a couple of textures. Once your textures are imported, select one of them and then let's go to the property grid in the top right corner of the screen. The first option we have here is the source. This means the source or the raw image resource that we have somewhere in your resources folder, preferably. We then go to the size tab where we see width, height and use percentages checkbox. By default, a texture uses the use percentages checkbox. In case you're a drawing a texture, for instance, to the screen, and you want to say a specific width for a texture, you can disable this checkbox and set an absolute width or height for your texture. We then go to the format tab of the texture. There are three types of format for your texture. We have color, grayscale, and normal map. The color type texture, also often called the diffuse texture, it contains the base texture of a material and it is what a user would normally see when it's viewing a model or either a UI element. Before we go to the other two types, let's first have a look at those bottom three options here, generate mid maps, compress and stream, because for all three, the texture types, these three bottom options are available. So what does generate mid maps do? If we have this option enabled, then it will then Xenco Game Studio will generate different versions of the texture at different resolutions to be displayed at different distances. This increases performance, it removes any visual artifacts, and it reduces pop-in when using streaming. However, this technique also uses more memory. This option should not be selected when you are using textures that are at the same distance from the camera. For instance, the UI elements like a splash screen. The compress option compresses the final texture to a format based on the target platform and usage. The final texture is always in a multiple of four. This can be very useful in case you are making a mobile game where texture compression is normally enabled. The last option is the stream option. We can stream a texture dynamically at runtime. This improves performance and scene loading times. However, it is not recommended to have this option enabled when you're loading splash screens or when you're looking at a texture that is constantly in your face. For instance, if you have a third person model of a character that you're controlling, then you want to have those textures right away, right available at the moment you start playing. So when you stream textures, Xenco only loads them when they are needed. This significantly decreases the time it takes to load a game or scene. It also uses less memory and it makes your game easier to scale. Now let's have a look at the other two options that are available for color textures. First off, there is a checkbox for the sRGB sampling. Now by default, you're good to go and just leave this checkbox enabled because this checkbox stores the texture in an sRGB format and it converts to linear space when sampled. 
So this option is more recommended for all color textures, unless they are explicitly in linear space. Now let's have a look at transparent textures. In the sample textures that I've imported in this tutorial project, let's select this leaves texture. And in order to, for us to really see what's going on, I've added a UI page to my project and I've added an image element. In a later tutorial, we'll cover more about the UI elements and how they work. For now, I'll just go ahead and use this image element and I'll select a texture for it so that it can be drawn directly onto the scene. So this is the texture that we're actually using right now. As you can see, the transparency is already being applied. But why is this? Let's select the texture and go to the format and then the transparency tab. Right now, the alpha setting here determines that our texture should be rendered with alpha settings enabled or the transparency should occur. These other options are used for masking or interpolate the texture colors. What if you have a texture that you want to use as a transparent texture, but simply doesn't have any transparent parts inside the texture? Let's replace this texture of a leaf with a different texture, the one that I have right here with a red background. As you can see, the leaves are still being drawn, but I want to get rid of the red part around the leaves. We can do this by selecting the texture itself, again going to the transparency tab, clicking on the color key checkbox, and then by selecting the appropriate color that we want to chroma key out. In this case, a red color. And although this technique works, it's still recommended that you use textures that have actual transparent parts inside the texture itself. Now let's move on to a different type of texture. In this case, the normal map. In the textures that I've imported, we have a purple-ish kind of texture that is called a normal map. We can often recognize these kind of textures because they have a different prefix or postfix in their name. This is often underscore NML or BMP or dot three or full out normal. So what are normal maps in the first place? So normal maps are textures that can add a different appearance to a surface detail. This could be a crack or a bump and it doesn't actually change the geometry of a model. It just appears to be looking that way. And that is because it contains information on how the mesh should reflect light. And this creates the illusion of a much more complex geometry. This saves out on a lot of processing power. Once you have this normal texture selected, be sure to set its type to normal map. As you can see, we only have one extra option now, which is the invert Y option. Depending on the tool you use to create normal maps or the normal map is created with, you want to use this checkbox. What this does, it, it uses the positive Y component, which is often green, to face up in tangent space. Last but not least, we have the grayscale textures and those can be all kinds of textures. In the example here shown in the asset view, I have two types of grayscale textures, but they actually should be doing different kinds of things. Either way, if I have selected them, I'm going to set them to grayscale. As you can see, this doesn't generate any additional options for it. So what are these kind of grayscale textures actually doing? Grayscale textures can be recognized by, again, by their postfix in their name. It's often GLS or AO, which stands for ambient occlusion. It could be spec for specular map and the GLS stands for gloss. This is very useful in case you want to give a material later on a specific part to recognize on how to render it differently. More on this in the upcoming materials tutorials. Last but not least, we also have a global texture settings in order to set the overall texture quality of your project. We can do this by going to the root of our project and looking for the game settings file. As soon as we've select that, we can go to the textures tab and there we can set the overall texture quality of our target platform. 
if you're targeting a mobile device, you might want to set the texture quality to fast. Or if you're doing a lot of development work, you want to set the texture quality to fast because this produces a faster build of your project. If you're going to do a release build and you're targeting a desktop platform, be sure to set this to high or best. In the next tutorial, we'll have a look at materials and how we can actually use these beautiful textures to their full potential.